Welcome to the Time to Football Podcast. My name is Asad Khan and I am so glad that you're tuning in. Chances are you're either listening to this on YouTube or SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on SoundCloud, just so you know that we do have a YouTube channel. That's where we do most of our work. You can go to youtube.com slash time to football. Check us out right there. Time to football is one word and it uses the number two instead of the word two. Why is that? Tell him, Big Sean. I don't give a, I don't give a, I don't, I don't, I don't give a. Exactly. Now we're going to get right into it, but before we get started, you know that I get to give a shout out to my partner, Whistle Sports. Whistle Sports is the fastest growing sports network online, ranging from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Vine. Yes, Vine isn't only for King Batch and hipsters that sing a tidbit of a song in six seconds. Ever since I have partnered with Whistle Sports, I have seen Time to Football grow tremendously, bringing in hundreds of subscribers. They also send you holiday cards in the mail, and it's freaking adorable. You can follow them on any of the big name social media sites. Whistle Sports, change the game. All right. Yep, I get $100 every time I mention the name Whistle Sports. Oops, just got another 100 We are recording live in my mom's basement. <laughs> Now, we have a lot to talk about. We have big stories, big news, some big trades going on. I haven't made anything in over a month. No podcast, no video, but I'm back at it because this past February, I just decided to take a break. So I decided to take a month off, try to find myself, find out who I am as a human being, and I found out that I still am the skinny bearded loser that I always will be. Ha ha! I need a girlfriend. But seriously, though, let's move on to our top stories in the NFL today. Longtime defensive tackle of the Arizona Cardinals, Darnell Dockett, was released earlier in the week, but he has found a new home quick, and it's Arizona's NFC West rival, the San Francisco 49ers. Dockett signed a two-year deal worth $7.5 million. A couple players that seem like they're not coming back to their teams, one of them includes Chiefs wide receiver Dwayne Bowe. Dwayne Bowe has been on the trade market for the longest time, put on there by Kansas City, but if he's not expected to be traded, he will be released. Another one of those players is the face and the hair of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense for the past decade, Troy Polamalu. Pittsburgh has announced that Troy Polamalu will not be in their plans for 2015. Polamalu is set to become a free agent soon, however, it is a possibility that he might just retire from the NFL as a Pittsburgh Steeler. We've got some trade updates for you from the Buffalo Bills. They have been making moves. One trade is for quarterback Matt Castle. The Bills traded the Vikings undisclosed draft picks in exchange for the signal caller. A bigger trade that the Bills were involved in, the Bills traded their linebacker Kiko Alonso to the Philadelphia Eagles in exchange for running back LaShawn McCoy. McCoy led the NFL in rushing yards back in 2013, which was also Kiko Alonso's rookie year, where he started all 16 games and was a candidate for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Last year, however, Alonso was out for the entire season with an ACL injury. Lastly, Texans wide receiver Andre Johnson asked for his release from the Houston Texans. Before that, he was asked to be traded, but after those plans didn't work out and him being discontent with the direction that the organization is going in, he asked for his release. That's actually what we're going to talk about right now. Well, Johnson, as you guys already know, was dissatisfied before the 2014 season started, so you kind of saw this coming. And throughout the entire 2014 season, you saw the torch being passed from Andre Johnson to DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins was the leading receiver for the Texans and who I believe was one of, if not the, most underrated receiver of last year. But how did all this come about? Well, Texans head coach Bill O'Brien sat down with Andre Johnson and told him, hey, you're only going to get about 40 receptions this upcoming 2015 season. Oh yeah, and you won't be a starter. What was Johnson's response? He laughed. And I mean, he has a right to do so. Even at 33 years of age, I still believe he's producing. He got 936 receiving yards last year, 
plus three touchdowns, plus 85 receptions. Targeted 147 times. Compare that to the two previous years. Have his numbers gone down? Yes. In 2012, he was four yards away from having 1,600 receiving yards. In 2013, he had 1,400 receiving yards. But still, his numbers going down, there's a lot of stuff that factors into it. One of those is the rise of DeAndre Hopkins. Another one being that for his entire career, Johnson has never had uh, an elite quarterback. And this isn't any offense to David Carr, Matt Schaub, Ryan Fitzpatrick, which I believe Ryan Fitzpatrick didn't do that bad. But if Johnson were to have a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or an Andrew Luck or a Drew Brees or an Aaron Rodgers, think of the things that he could do. I think it's a bad call by the Texans organization. Johnson's been really loyal to the team. He deserves to be a starter. But hey, hopefully we'll see him do something incredible with another team in 2015. As mentioned earlier, the Bills have traded Kiko Alonso to the Philadelphia Eagles in exchange for running back LaShawn McCoy. Also, they traded undisclosed draft picks to the Minnesota Vikings for quarterback Matt Castle. You know, on paper, you would say that the Buffalo Bills had the better end of the trade with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I agree. McCoy led the NFL in rushing yards in 2013. Last year, he still performed, had 1,300 yards. You look at this Bills team. They bring in Rex Ryan as their head coach, who's a pretty good coach. Their defense for the past two years has been amazing. It's been good enough to get their former defensive coordinator, Mike Pettin, a coaching job in Cleveland. Also, they've performed really well without Kiko Alonso, who was out all of last year with an ACL injury. So the way the Bills team is looking, great head coach, great defense. They have a great running back now. Not saying that Fred Jackson and CJ Spiller weren't great running backs, which by the way, CJ Spiller is on his way out. But LaShawn McCoy is that playmaker that you need. And on top of that, people would scoff at the idea that you would bring in Matt Castle. Like what impact would Matt Castle make? My question back to you is that does Matt Castle really need to make an impact? Think about it. Compare a veteran quarterback to a rookie quarterback. Which one is going to make more mistakes? Obviously the rookie quarterback. If Matt Castle is the starter, which I don't know what Buffalo's plan is with him. Maybe they just wanted to bring in a mentor for EJ Manuel, like how the Browns did with Josh McCown bringing him in to help mentor Johnny Manziel, which is a terrible idea. I think they shouldn't have signed Josh McCown. They should have just stuck with Brian Hoyer, but that's irrelevant. With LaShawn McCoy coming into Buffalo, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bills ran the ball 30 to 40 times each game. You often hear about that title game manager for quarterbacks. First quarterback you think of, Alex Smith. Some quarterbacks who are given that role find that disrespectful. Some quarterbacks just embrace it. But that's not to say that Alex Smith is not a good quarterback. He's an above average quarterback. And the direction that the Buffalo Bills are looking like they're going in is that you have a great running game, rely on your running game, and your solid defense. And the quarterback, your job, don't make mistakes. Move the ball down the field whenever it's your chance to. However, you're not the game changer in this offense. You could be. You could throw a 60-yard touchdown pass to a wide receiver to Robert Woods, but it's not expected. What's expected is that LaShawn McCoy carries the load, runs the ball, helps the Bills move down the field. That's the direction that I see the Buffalo Bills going in, and that's why I believe they're going to be contenders in the AFC East. Heck, the AFC East could be the best division in football next year. You've got the Patriots who will always be good, but the Buffalo Bills for the first time ever, I believe, could be the team to dethrone the New England Patriots as AFC East champions. The wild card in that division, the Miami Dolphins who are also on the rise. You look at a team that can't get past that 7-9 and and 8-8 barrier, but their defense showed last year that they have promise, they have potential. Their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, is slowly but surely progressing. Seriously, look up his stats. Do not sleep on him. Last year, 27 touchdowns to only 12 interceptions. Ryan Tannehill is starting to make a mark in Miami. But I believe the Buffalo Bills, for the first time in a long time, have the potential to be AFC East champions. With that said, that's all I'm going to talk to you guys about today. 
Remember that if you're listening to this on YouTube, we do have a SoundCloud channel, soundcloud.com slash time to football, or you can download the SoundCloud app completely free and search for time to football on there. You can listen to it on the go on your iPhone, iPad, iPod. I don't know what device eight-year-old kids have these days. I didn't get my first phone till I was 17 years old and it was a flip phone. But now I have an iPhone and I downloaded the SoundCloud app and I listen to Time to Football on the go. Whether if it's I'm driving or I'm at work or I'm at the gym, I can listen to Time to Football on the go on the SoundCloud app. And if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, remember that we do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash time to football. That's where we do most of our work. Thank you guys for listening, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to stay tuned, follow, subscribe for more podcasts coming in the future your way.